Hi everyone, we, I'm Sofia Lagerqvist. Anna Ligren. Charlotte von der Lanken. Katja Sävström, and together we are FRONT. We work with explosions, computer games, animals and robotics when we make design. We think this way of working emerges from our collaboration. We've been working together, uh, we've been, we met in school when we studied at Konstfack in, at the Arts, Crafts and Design in Stockholm. And we graduated as uh, industrial designers with a master de degree two years ago. And uh, we were friends from the beginning and we started to, to talk about the conventions within industrial design. And we thought that we should start to work together and explore what design is and what it could be. Uh, we ask ourselves questions such as, why do you name your car? And does it, can an object have a personality? And why do you keep gifts that you don't even like? And why do you feel so proud when you have managed to put together that IKEA furniture? We always work together with all our ideas and projects and we usually sit around the table at our, our office in Stockholm to discuss and for us collaboration is a great advantage. It's about bringing people together with different knowledge to make something bigger and better than one can achieve alone. We were working with, um, we were talking about the design process and a lot of the things that we do emerges from the design process in itself. And we, um, we were talking about that we don't, uh, um, as in the pictures you saw, that we were collaborating with each other, but we are also collaborating with a lot of other people. We think that is one of the m most interesting and most important parts of design, is collaborating with people that know more than you do yourself. And uh, here we made a project where we we're talking about that the design process is not, a, oh, it's not only free design uh, creative process. So they're always, from the first idea to the final product, there are always so many different aspects and factors that are affecting the outcome at random. So we uh, invited animals to be that random factor that is affecting the outcome. And you can wonder, who is then the designer if we let animals make the form? We would like you to meet one of our colleagues, the snake. He helped us to squeeze clay and uh, the outcome, the product, became a pig. The president of one of Sweden's biggest snake clubs collected the snakes from all the members and they kept, them, kept it in a big bag so we could choose the snake that had the best structure. Here you can see the imprint of the snake on the coat pig. Rabbits are very good at making large systems of tunnels underneath the ground. So we went to a rabbit farm to see what we could do together. So what we did was that we reached as far as we could with our arms inside this rabbit hole and we casted it and the result was this lamp. We also worked with the rats to make a wallpaper. So we put wallpaper rolls inside the cage of rats and they love to eat on anything but especially paper. And uh, they ate deep holes on the rolls, and when you unfold it, it became like a repetitive pattern of holes. We asked animals to, to do the things that they were good at.
So here you can see the old wallpaper is showing through, so it depends on what wallpaper you have underneath, what, how it looks like, so it's different on every wall. <laughs> These are some images from Sweden, from the north of Sweden. It's a lot of snow right now, up to one meter. So it's really nice to be here in the sun. Uh, we took the footprints of dogs crawling around in deep snow and turned the shapes into ceramic vases. Here you can see the structure of the snow on the outside. This is at the University of Entomology in Uppsala, in Sweden. And uh, we were interested in these kind of patterns that you can see on wood that are made by beetles. And they, um, they mate, and then they, uh, the female goes underneath the bark of the trees and uh, they lay egg in this kind of line that you can see in the middle. And then the small um, the eggs hatches and the small bugs comes out and they eat their way underneath the bark and they grow bigger and bigger and bigger and then when they are done they drill a little hole through the bark and comes out. Everyone probably knows that flies and moths are attracted to light and what we did was that we recorded the motion uh, of a fly's parts around the bulb and we made it into this lampshade. We are also very interested in working with techniques, new techniques and materials. This is a uh, waste material, branches pressed together into a new wooden material. We also let the chainsaw sculpture make uh, a chair out of one solid piece of wood. Normally he, likes, he makes sculptures such as dolphins and vikings and he also attending something called the World Championship of Chainsaw Sculpturing. <laughs> this is uh, something knitted in carbon fiber. Carbon can, fiber can stand very low temperatures and also very high temperatures. And malted glass comes up in temperatures such as 1200 degrees Celsius. So we blow the hot glass right into these knitted shapes of carbon fiber. The girl glazing is leading the electricity to the light bulb. We found a material that is slowly changing and this table is transformed by its own weight and after a few months it collapses. <laughs> We made a series of uh, common home technology objects uh, and we wanted to see if we made them in another, another shape or another material, if people could use them in another way. These are loudspeakers made of blown glass, like large vases. And this round shape of the loudspeaker and the hard density, the high density of the glass makes this perfect conditions for a good sound. Objects tell stories of moments in our lives, people we have met, and places we have been to. And we did 100 interviews with people in their home, and we called the project Story of Things. We wanted to see what makes the strong connection, and why is people so, uh, find a so strong attachment to objects. And we wanted to find out what's making this connection. Design is just the beginning of a product. What happens with it after it has left the shelf of the stores? And um, we were interested in finding what was beyond the practical functions of object. These other features within an object that make you buy one thing in front of another, or even a thing that you already have at home. This is one of the interviews that we got from this research. I changed my mobile to this one, which they said was much better, some new thing. But it's terrible, and it switches off by itself. It's discharged all the time and disconnects when I talk to someone. Then it sends several of the same text messages. A friend of mine counted, and he got 62 of the same message. Once a girl I liked texted me, do you want to meet up? And I answered something nice, but then I never heard from her again. 
Later, I found out that my phone had sent her so many messages that she thought I was a bit weird and decided not to see me. When my subscription for the phone ends, I will buy the oldest one they have, a proper one. This is a famous porcelain that many people collect in Sweden. And the girl who owns this porcelain, she seldom used it. She had it on a special shelf and never touched it. And then, by accident, she broke it and glued it back together. So now she uses it every day. So in a way, it became much more valuable for her now. We took some of these stories and some of these objects and reproduced them in red plastic and attached the personal story, personal story on the surface of the object. Uh, we showed these at the Milan Furniture Fair and we met a lot of people from different parts of the world and then we sent these objects to them, to 100 different objects and we sent it together with a camera so they have taken images and told us stories about their belongings. And then we collected all these interviews and we sat down and we were talking about what do we think that we, people were um, thinking, uh, what, uh, what were the things that they really, uh, the features that we would like to work on with further? Is it possible for a designer to work with this uh, knowledge? And, um, we made a new collection with objects where we built in these kind of features within. This is a lamp that reacts on your movement. So when you walk in the room, it wakes up and lit. And when you walk out again, it falls asleep. We made a table that learns how to walk. From the beginning it stumbles, but after a while it learns by its own mistake how to walk. We made a table, there's a built-in processor under the tabletop and each leg has got a motor inside. Uh, and we wanted to see if we could make a, an object with an own personality. We were looking at these stories that people were telling. So we were looking at other areas that were, I think, where objects always t also tell stories, like in film. And we were... Uh, if you see a vase in a film, you know that it's doomed to break. So we made a vase with a built-in fall, where the motion is one with the object. We wonder is the fact that the vase can break part of its function. We also been talking about how the context affects how you look upon an object. So we took the reflection uh, and made it into the <clears throat> permanent reflection of a vase. So when you move it to another room, you will both see the old reflection and also the new reflection of its new room, like a double exposure. So the vase tells a little about its history. You read things through previous experiences. And in Sweden, most floors, or most wooden floors, are made of pine. So we made a wooden floor, but when you stepped on it, you realized it was soft. And when we were exhibiting this floor, people were like going, screaming and jumping and getting really, really surprised. And this project is about a, a knowledge the fact that you can reevaluate what you have just seen, that something is totally different than you see. Design is a product of its time, all objects are, and uh, we, uh, we wanted to make an object that was made in, a, that was a, got its form from a one specific second. So we made design in 0.4 seconds. With help from an explosion, we made a big hole. And uh, from this hole, we made a mold for a soft launcher. In this project, we let a computer do the design totally on its own. 
We put six different classical chairs in a morph program. And this program can make one chair grow into another chair. So this program made 5,300 new chairs. When we did our interviews, many people talked about things that they had done themselves, which they were proud of. In this project, you can stop the sequence at any second, and you can materialize the 3D file at that specific moment. We uh, printed out this chair, which is a part of the sequence between Tom Wack, Byron Arad, and a Vanner Panton chair. How do you read objects that you don't recognize, that you haven't seen before? We let the 3D scanner scan different objects, and then we let the mistakes of the 3D scanner create new shapes. We were a bit curious, how far can you go before you don't recognize the object any longer? The, through the interviews, we learned that people recognize that there is a change within products, and we wanted to do a product with a built-in change. So we made a UV-sensitive wallpaper that changed with the sunlight. So when the sun shines into the room, the wallpaper develops. In other projects, we have also used the knowledge that we got from this project, Story of Things. Uh, for example, when we got asked to do the interior for a Tinsta art gallery in Stockholm, we first thought uh, is it, as a, a problem that the interior will gradually change, like public spaces that get, they get worn, the pieces get worn because a lot of people use it. Uh, then we thought it could be a possibility, so we created an interior with a built-in change. The floor, for example, we painted with gold, and then we painted it back with the same grey colour as it had before. So as, peop as people walk on the floor, the grey colour gradually tears off, and these golden parts appear, so you could see where people move around in the art gallery. We found plants that is growing seven meters a year. And from the beginning, they were just small plants along the sides of the walls. And now they have grown all up the walls and covering the ceiling. So all the, the entrance room is totally covered in green. And uh, we were also interested in these objects that you recognize, that everyone recognizes. But you, we wanted to add a little change. So we took these white plastic chairs that cost nothing and uh, it's probably the most well-known chair in the world. And we added a leather seat for the cafe area and uh, for the uh, office we put small wheels on it. And uh, in the outside we put hundreds of them and we printed them with the Tienstar art gallery. And they were free for everyone to take. So these were spread around uh, in the city and people were bringing them home. We were also curious to see if people would really take them because they're actually banned in some areas of Sweden. They are banned because they're considered to be too ugly. <laughs> so... In the inner room, we used common silk and plastic flowers and put them on the wall like a three-dimensional wallpaper. And uh, the lamps are also projectors. So it depends on what table you sit at, what decoration your porcelain will have. And when you come to the art space, you can put up your own peg to hang your jacket on. So it gradually becomes more and more like a material than single pegs. So this way you can also see how many people who's been who has been visited the art space. And this is a lamp of a shredded poster. So it's a different lamp with every exhibition and new poster. 
The black max in the cafe part reveals an image when you pour hot water into it. And this image shows the gallery as it looked like before we made those changes. And we will make new mugs each year to, um, to show the process of the change and document it on these mugs. Design classic can sometimes be more reproduced as image in books, in magazines, than they actually are in reality, like an actual object. So we asked ourselves, is it possible to design without material, materializing the actual object? So we designed a new computer game where we invited people to come and change their products. And they have features they couldn't have in reality. For instance, this lamp, you can shoot at it in the game, and when you shoot at it, the light comes out in the room like dots from the holes. Mm, we work in a pretty broad field of design, uh, all from mass production to uh, unique pieces for galleries. And we think that those fields can give a lot to each other. One thing that starts as a unique piece can end up as a mass-produced item and the other way around. For example, we made this leather and plastic chair for Tensa Konsthall, which is now being produced by Belgian company Vlamsch. These are products that we already have told you about, and they are now within the Droch design collection, and we showed them one year ago at uh, our solo exhibition at their gallery, among other products. This bin changes depending on how much trash it holds. From the beginning, it's a straight cylinder, but when you throw trashes in it, it starts, starts to bounce, and it gets fat from, its, from the weight of the content. Uh, objects inside those lamps decorate the lamps with shadows. Things that, things that you recognize, but used in a def different way. These are 14 standard hangers, and together it creates a unique coat stand. And then we also got inspired from our interior in Tensta art space to make our own version of the most common peg in the world, the self-adaptive plastic peg. This is plastic draped. Now, this is plastic draped like textile, so it becomes a freestanding screen. These products are in production for Materia. Marcel Wonders called us and asked us to make a lamp for Moy. He said, make a lamp that even my grandmother would like. <laughs> and uh, we sat down and talked and we said, something that was uh, equally amongst most of these people that were telling us stories was that they had a really strong connection to things that were very figurative. And um, so we made these lamps that are life-size animals with a function. Uh, it was, it's interesting to see how this works when we, we wanted to, make, to create an, a product that has this instant feeling built in, that you come up and don't really know if you want to like it or not. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we have seen people in the exhibitions where we have shown it and in, in shops that there are a lot of people that come up and pat, pet it. <laughs> and that is um, what we wanted, to make a product with a personality. In October last year, we moved our office for two months to Japan, and it was a fantastic time for inspiration. And uh, when we were in Japan, we worked on a project we called Sketch Furniture. And we had the opportunity to show the p process as a performance in Tokyo. And we worked together with a company that helped us to work with motion capture. A motion capture is 10 cameras within a room. There are special cameras, and they capture your movement. And they 
made a special tool for us so we could draw furniture directly in the air. You couldn't see what you were doing, but it was like the cameras captured the lines in the air. So by combining two different techniques, motion capture and rapid prototyping, we were able to draw a line in the air and later materialize it into real existing objects. And uh, I'm going to explain those techniques. Uh, motion capture is a technique which, which is usually used within computer games and animations to translate motion, motion uh, body language into animated figures. Um, and rapid prototyping is a technique for materializing 3D files. So by putting these te techniques together in a new way that no one has done before, we made it possible to materialize handmade sketches and direct uh, design directly in space. So here are the final pieces, motion made into a solid form. that our design can make people curious about the objects that surround them. And we want to make that kind of objects that make people tell stories about them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.